again. Listen, I've been reviewing these videos since the beginning and I'm, I'm just really struck at how timely these readings have been. You know, we as the church, we don't pick the, time, the timing of our readings to, to go along with what's going on in the world. The readings have been selected long ago. And it just goes to show how uh, God really knows us and understands what we're going through. So let's recap. In my very first video, we learned about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And we focused on Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, and their anxiety while they just waited and waited for Jesus to arrive while their brother perished. And then the unexpected happens. Jesus arrives and he raises his friend from the dead. Now, then there were the exciting events of Holy Week. You know, holy, separate, and dedicated to God. Well, it's the week that changed everything. Like a really big change. And that sort of makes us feel different things each day. Uh, the joy and hope of Palm Sunday. You know, Hosanna. Um, Savior, save us, and uh, the dark jealousies of the leaders. And then the Passover meal, where Jesus compares his body and blood to the broken bread and the poured out wine and tells us, remember me. And Good Friday, our sadness and gratitude for Jesus laying down his life for us, like the Good Shepherd, giving us is everything. And most importantly, Easter Sunday. Resurrection, hallelujah, Christ is risen. And he has overcome death for anyone who chooses to accept his grace. Well, Holy Week, the week that changed everything for our benefit. Well, after the resurrection, things are really pretty unstable. And the disciples, afraid and unknowing, find themselves in a locked room. Self-isolating, if you will. You tell me, these are timely readings. So then Jesus appears and he immediately grants them peace. God's peace. The peace that comes with needing nothing else. Everyone's, everything is complete. Nothing is missing. Do you remember the Grinch that stole Christmas? Well, remember how the Grinch um, takes away all the presents and the food and the decorations of Christmas? And yet on Christmas morning, all the Who's wake up and they, they hold hands and they sing. They're at peace. Nothing was missing. I always wondered what it would have been like if the story ended there. I mean, don't get me wrong. We love that the Grinch, his heart grew big and he had a change. That's all good, but just kind of curious. I think it could have ended there and it still would have been a very good story. Back to our recap. After the resurrection, the whole town is talking about it, including a couple walking down the road, heading back to their home. And they meet up with Jesus, only they don't know it's Jesus. God keeps them from recognizing him until later, when at dinner, Jesus kind of takes over the host duties he blesses and breaks bread. Pow! They realize it. They get it. This is their Lord and Savior, the Messiah, standing right in front of them. And then last week, God lovingly and gently reminds us, he'll take care of us like the Good Shepherd. All right, that was a lot of review. Now, on to this week's very well-timed lesson. But first, please pray with me. Father, we thank you for giving us everything. Help us to stay focused on you in these uncertain times. Please increase our trust in you and grant us peace. We pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Well, Today's story takes place shortly before Jesus goes to the cross. Jesus knows what's about to happen. The betrayal, 
the suffering, and the disciples, like us, don't really understand, and they're very, very upset. And then Jesus says this in John 14, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. Trust. To have faith, to believe, I think it's more. I think it's really, really putting confidence in someone. You know, when someone says, you know, I'll trust you'll make the right decision. Or when someone says, you know, I give you my word, you can trust in me. My word. Hmm. The word. God's word. I mean, he's literally, literally telling us, don't be troubled. Trust him. And then Jesus says something curious. I am going to prepare a place for you. I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am going. And you, the, and you know the way to where I am going. It sounds like, like a literal place. You know, a place that we could sort of plug into our GPS and eventually arrive there. Yeah, no, no, it's not. Um, remember the bridge, right? It was a way to cross from one place to another. Well, Jesus and the cross are the way the means in which we get from here to our eternal spiritual place with our Father. Remember, whoever believes in him will have eternal life. But while we're still on earth, we got a job to do. He also tells us, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. So Jesus is telling us we got a job to do. Greater works. Greater. But how? Well, like the prophets and the disciples, the prophets that were given God's word and had to tell people, and the disciples who shared the good news of Jesus Christ, that's what we got to do. We got to tell as many people as possible. We also, most importantly, need to show God's love. Imagine if we all used the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. I may have added or taken away one. But if we all did these things collectively, well, that would be pretty great, right? They really should know we are Christians by our love. So, how wonderful is God's word. It's comforting to know that God knows us and Jesus knows exactly what we're going through. The waiting, the uncertainty, the anxiety, the global change. But he gives us hope and assurance his word and peace forever. So I really am so grateful that you've taken the time to watch all these videos. It's really been a blessing to serve you like this. Moving forward, I'll be putting my uh, energies into our new curriculum here at St. John's, the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. And I used some of the materials a couple of weeks ago to share the parable of the Good Shepherd. Well there'll be a whole new environment for you to explore called an atrium. It will be filled with all sorts of materials that you'll be able to work with. Well, you could say that Mother Judith and I are preparing a place for you. Stay tuned for more info. Thank you so much and remember, God is with you.